uh, for the uh, what I call it songwriters group. Yeah. Um, is anybody interested? Nobody's asked about the Amy Lou Harris song. No, you didn't ask. <laughs> Well, are you into it? Yes. How many Emmy Lou Harris fans are here in this room? Wonderful. So you'll appreciate this. Everybody else, just hang on for a second. We'll take a minute. So about twenty some odd years ago, I was on tour with the band. I was I was uh, about five at the time, and. Uh, uh, they had just finished doing a record with Malcolm Byrne, who's a producer that I'm a fan of. He's like uh, Daniel Lanois' protege, if anybody's familiar with Daniel Lanois. Okay. Okay, this, is, this whole story is going to be lost on most of you. We were going to Texas, and they had just finished a record with Malcolm, so they knew him, and they knew we could swing through uh, 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 Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana and swing into a studio. Now, I will say I can tell this story without bragging rights because I just happen to be there, okay? This is sort of a just happen to be there situation. And um, we got there, so he said, yeah, come on over. We just finished up a record. And we got there, and he said, oh, man, you just missed Emmy Lou. She was here 10 minutes ago. We just finished mixing her newest record. At which point I'm kind of geeking out. I'm already geeking out, but I'm 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 over geeking out at this point. To think like, wow, we just they just finished an Emmy Lou Harris record, and we went inside and we went into the living room where his console is, and he played off the board the song that I opened the set with called The Pearl, um, and I had to do everything I could. It was so beautiful, just the whole experience of sitting in this living room, being the first people to ever hear this song. Uh, played was really special and the song itself is just gorgeous one of the best like lyrically Emmy Lou sings a lot of other people's songs but she's one of the best lyricists I think out there um, and f was floored by this song and so when it came out I immediately learned the song and I've been I've been playing it ever since for 20 some odd years and still love it to this day still resonates with me so fast forward to about four years ago and I was in Nashville where I live. I live in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, my buddy Phil called me and said, hey, there's a band that's canceled for the Americana Fest. Could you come and s sit in for them? And I said, of course. OK, so I went and I did a song. And Emmy Lou Harris was closing the night out. And uh, she showed up. And I'm, I'm backstage kind of hanging out, waiting to do my thing. And she shows up, and she's the coolest human ever. She was like my cool aunt. And I um, met her, and I said, hey, can I tell you a story? And, and I told her the story about how we showed up at this, at this studio and um, heard her song. And I said, I've been, I've been covering it ever since um, then. I still cover it to this day. And she said, that's, that's cool. She goes, I usually cover everybody else's songs, but nobody covers my songs. I said, well, I, I do, and I've been doing it for a long time. Well, so fast forward to the end of the night. And uh, Phil calls everybody back up. She goes, Emmy Lou wants everybody up on stage to sing the last song. And um, I'm already in freak out zone. So we go up on the stage and I stand right next to her. And we sing The Pearl. She closes out with The Pearl, which is amazing. And so I'm singing this song with her. And, I, and there's a moment in the middle of singing uh, right next to fucking Emmy Lou Harris and thinking, how in the hell did I get here? Like, how did I get here? And my friend was in the audience and she was taking pictures and she took a shot of the moment. <laughs> my, my face registered reality. It's like <laughs> suddenly I came out of shock and she said, I saw it. I saw the moment your face swelled up, trying not to just burst into tears. And I didn't burst into tears, thankfully, but I almost did. But anyway, that's my Amy Lou Harris story. So, thanks, thanks for indulging me. So, this song. Uh, Um, 
So this is the second song I wrote for the two weeks I was in this writer's group. And um, the prompt on this one was uh, Ancient Injury. Um, and anybody who knows my music um, <clears throat> knows that that's kind of right up my alley. And um, I loved it. And immediately kind of had a thought of this archeological dig. And um, kind of played off this idea to write this song. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, one sec. I kind of went into this archaeological dig thing, kind of going in to try to find some old artifact to try to understand something of the present. And, uh, and that kind of took its own course in my own mind. And um, I'm kind of a geeky fan of Jungian psychology. And... Uh, there's an old Gnostic text that says if you, I don't mean to get too deep here, but I'm gonna. Um, it says, uh, it's an old Gnostic text that says, uh, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. And I kind of played with that idea in this song. Um, this is called uh, Belly of the Beast. Take 
take some time And a little bravery Thank you so much.